Hello friends, in today's class, we will be studying about paramagnetic, diamagnetic and ferromagnetic materials. This is the most important prerequisites to begin this chapter. Now, we know that there are three states of matter, solids, liquids and gases. In this chapter, we are mainly concerned about the solid state and now we will be classifying the solids but our classifications parameter would be the magnetic property. Now, solids are classified into three groups based on their magnitude and sign of relative permeability that is mu r. Now, you have heard about mu r that is relative permeability in your class 12. So, this relative permeability is the most important parameter by which we used to initially I would say classify the solids. Now, why did we use the word initially? Because later on when more materials were discovered, we had changed the base of r classification to a newer one. For now, let's see this classification. Now, based on the sign of relative permeability, I had three types. Case 1, mu r less than 1. Case 2, mu r greater than 1. And case 3, mu r much much greater than 1. So, if mu r is less than 1, the material is diamagnetic. If mu r greater than 1, the material is paramagnetic. And if mu r is greater greater than 1, it is ferromagnetic. So these are the three types of material which are classified based on the value of their mu r. Now, as I said earlier, this is the initial classification. Now, after the discovery of new materials, we came up with a new type of classification that says, an alternative theory was introduced wherein solids were divided into two broad groups based on their magnetic dipole moments. So initially a classification was based on mu r or the relative permeability. Now it is based on magnetic dipole moments. Fun fact, it is the most important and the latest classification of magnetic materials. So in exams, so whenever the examiner asks you, state the types of classification. So you need to mention both of this classification with a light on this topic that the magnetic dipole moments parameter for classification of magnetic materials is the most latest one. Now, so based on the magnetic dipole moments, we have when permanent magnetic dipole moment is absent and when permanent magnetic dipole moment is present. So basically based on the magnetic dipole moments we have two classification. In one it is absent and in second it is present. Now if it is absent it is diamagnetic and if it is present it is paramagnetic, ferromagnetic, we have antiferromagnetic as well as ferrimagnetic. So these are basically the subheadings of the classification. Now a point would come if permanent magnetic dipole moment is absent or present, it is easy to determine. Yes, it is diamagnetic. So how come we can have this four classification? So on what parameter the materials are classified as paramagnetic, ferromagnetic, antiferromagnetic and ferrimagnetic. So well, this classification is done on interaction between the atomic magnetic dipoles. We'll be looking in details of how this interaction between the magnetic dipole works and how are they classified as paramagnetic, ferromagnetic, antiferromagnetic and ferrimagnetic materials. Now, let's recall this and see the arrangement. In paramagnetic, you can see all the dipole moments are random. So, in short, they do not follow any trend. However, in ferromagnetic, they all are aligned in same given direction. Now, what happens in antiferromagnetic? If you see, in antiferromagnetic, these are the lines which are same as ferromagnetic, but their neighbors are in opposite direction. Very important transition you need to notice that the neighbors are opposite in orientation as you can see here. Now what happens in ferrimagnetic? Well this is the same 
as antiferromagnetic with respect to the initial lines but in the next state the neighbors have opposite polarity but other than opposite polarity they also have smaller magnitude if you can compare the magnitude of antiferromagnetic and ferrimagnetic for the opposite poles you will see the ferrimagnetic has lesser magnitude as compared to antiferromagnetic so this is the most crucial point and important point of classification between antiferromagnetic and ferrimagnetic examiner may ask you to draw the dipoles for antiferromagnetic and ferrimagnetic so whenever you are drawing for antiferromagnetic you need to make sure that both of the lines should be approximately of the same size whereas in the case of ferrimagnetic your lines in the neighbor which is pointing opposite should be smaller than what is pointing in the forward direction so this is the most important critical point in ferrimagnetic materials now let's take the most important and the crux of this chapter that is the distinguish between the paramagnetic ferromagnetic and diamagnetic substances do remember that this is the most important question for your university exams which is asked for around five to six months so make sure you write down at least eight to ten points in that so let's begin now we'll take three types of materials ferromagnetic materials paramagnetic materials and diamagnetic materials the first point is Ferromagnetic substances are strongly attracted towards magnetic field. Paramagnetic are feeble attraction towards magnetic field and diamagnetic substance shows feeble repulsion from the magnetic field. As you can see, the ferromagnetic are strongly attracted. Paramagnetic shows feeble attraction whereas diamagnetic show feeble repulsion to the magnetic field. Second point says, field lines are concentrated in the material for ferromagnetic for paramagnetic it says more number of field lines pass through the material than outside as you can see the paramagnetic materials has field line passing through the material as well as outside but yes it is make sure that more number of field lines pass through the material than outside however in diamagnetic less number of field lines pass through the material than outside in paramagnetic and diamagnetic this is the most important classification in paramagnetic more field lines pass through it and in diamagnetic less field lines pass through it again this point is a crucial point for your viva exams as well now the third point says in ferromagnetic set along the direction of the magnetic field paramagnetic align towards the direction of the magnetic field and in diamagnetic they tend to be perpendicular to the magnetic field direction so basically this point means that in ferromagnetic the magnetic field lines and the poles will try to align to each other in paramagnetic they will tend to align but it may or may not however in diamagnetic it will try not to oppose it but to remain perpendicular to it so that the effect of the external magnetic field is minimized susceptibility is less than unity but positive for paramagnetic however in diamagnetic the susceptibility is negative so important point for ferromagnetic susceptibility is large and positive in paramagnetic it is less than unity but positive it's only for diamagnetic where the susceptibility is negative relative permeability mu r much much greater than 1 which becomes for ferromagnetic relative permeability greater than 1 for paramagnetic and relative permeability less than 1 for diamagnetic again this becomes the most important point because as discussed earlier this is the foundation stone for the classification of ferromagnetic paramagnetic and diamagnetic materials next point says susceptibility decreases with temperature in a complex manner in ferromagnetic it is known that the susceptibility decreases with temperature but the manner is complex which means the manner cannot be quantified or you cannot have a quantitative analysis on which is the pattern in which the susceptibility and the temperature is dependent 
However, in case of paramagnetic, we say susceptibility is inversely proportional to temperature, which is nothing but as the Curie's law. You say that susceptibility is inversely proportional to temperature. However, in diamagnetic, it is independent of the temperature. So, susceptibility has no role to play with respect to temperature in a diamagnetic substance. Then we have, for ferromagnetic, these materials have a definite Curie point above which they become paramagnetic. So, we can say there is a particular point in ferromagnetism material there is a particular point in ferromagnetic materials crossing which they turn to be a paramagnetic material. So this is the fine point which is also known as the Curie point. So after this Curie point the materials of ferromagnetic nature will lose their properties and turn into a paramagnetic material or start showing the paramagnetic property. However in paramagnetic and diamagnetic there is no such Curie point as well as diamagnetic that there is no Curie point in both of them. Next point says B and M vary with H but not linearly and ultimately attain saturation. We have studied the relation between B, M and H in the previous class. So this relationship is not linear in terms of ferromagnetic. However, in paramagnetic B and M vary with H linearly at low temperature and at high temperature the field tends towards the saturation. So at low temperature B and M of course varies linearly with H but at high temperature it tends towards the saturation. In diamagnetic B and M vary with H linearly but no saturation is reached. In paramagnetic make sure it reaches towards the saturation at high temperature but in diamagnetic this saturation is not reached even if the temperature goes high. Next is the most important point again. Ferromagnetic substances exhibit the phenomenon of hysteresis. However, in paramagnetic and diamagnetic, this hysteresis is not exhibited. And the last, ferromagnetic substances possesses retentivity. However, no retentivity is possessed by paramagnetic and diamagnetic materials. Now, this is the most important question for your university exams. It has been asked for 5 to 6 marks as I stated earlier. So, you need to make sure you enclose all these points while writing the answers. Thank you.